My name is David. I work at Sparkfront Electronics, and I am passionate about weather balloons. I first saw a weather balloon project maybe five or six years ago on the internet. Somebody had a nice write-up, and I was just like fascinated by the photos. The idea that you could send a camera and a payload into near space up to 100,000 feet and take pictures, you know, from the you know see the curvature of the Earth, just blew my mind that you could even do that as a, just a hobbyist. Uh, the idea is you can uh, build a, a balloon payload to within the FAA regulations for they have different size, weight, density requirements. You can attach them to the bottom of a weather balloon. It's uh, filled with either helium or hydrogen to about six feet in diameter on the ground. That balloon will carry the payload up into space and then the balloon will expand, expand, expand until it can't expand anymore and it'll burst and then the payload falls back to Earth with a parachute, hopefully, and uh, you can safely recover it. The most exciting thing for me is watching the path of the balloon. Uh, it's always fun to try to predict where it will go based on the, the weather patterns and see sometimes the payloads fly 100 miles or more. Sometimes you can pick them up four or five miles down the road. So that's, that's the most exciting part for me is you know, spending the day in the car and you know, kind of tracking it with all your antennas and driving on all these backcountry roads. It's a lot of fun. So this is the box from the first payload that I launched. It's made out of like house insulation foam to keep the inside of the box warm. It can get down to like minus 50, minus 60 degrees up in, at altitude. So you really want to keep your electronics warm so they don't fail. I have a little flight computer here. This particular one has a GPS unit for tracking. It's got two redundant radio modules and two flight computers just in case anything fails. I'm using a ham radio downlink on both of them. One is APRS, which is an automated position reporting system that uh, is really well known in the ham radio world. It's used for tracking different things, whether it's a guy on a bicycle, a guy in a car, a weather balloon, or what have you. The other one is a 70 centimeter downlink that I can use for more real time. Uh, tracking. It's also got a data logger so it will record the entire journey. It's got a barometric pressure sensor, internal external temperature sensors, uh, a couple other little goodies on there just things that might be interesting at altitude. It broadcasts some down so like the latitude, longitude, altitude so I can track it and go hopefully recover it again but things like the temperature and barometric pressure sensors uh, it'll actually just log that data so I can recover it later and make all the pretty charts and graphs. I've launched four, I've got another one in the works and I'm working on a uh, zero pressure payload which hopefully will launch in December and maybe go to Europe, we'll see. The zero pressure envelope is instead of made out of uh, like latex that will stretch and expand and burst, it's made out of mylar, which doesn't stretch at all. So you inflate it about halfway on the ground, and then as it rises, as the gas inside expands, it fills up the entire payload until it can't expand anymore and it actually leaks gas out the bottom. But then the cool thing is it remains you know, kind of in the stasis, so it'll float at hopefully about 35,000 feet or so, right in the jet stream, and it will carry it across the Atlantic Ocean. It's a great hobby to get into. I highly recommend people get their amateur radio license if they can. It's a really easy test, and it enables projects like this. It's a lot of fun.